Hello there and welcome back to Let's Play Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. I'm the RN Genius, but you may call me Eric, and in the last episode we discovered a relationship between the gardener Liam Hurtley and Mrs. Carey. Makes him have a motive of killing Mr. Mr. Carey. Also, we got information from the from the kids we sent off to talk to the sailors, and now we know that there's a Patrick Cairns, and he is a harpooner, and he is at the pub, and he does arm wrestling, and I want to dress as a sailor so I don't like look so suspicious in my in my leger suit. Is leger an English word? This is Watson's room. Um, so I don't look suspicious in my suit, and instead are am dressed as a sailor. So let's dress as a sailor. Let's do this. Light suit, morning gown, sailor. Ah, there you go. I was I was surprised. Like I was confused there that I looked that way, but I don't. I look like this. Yay! Now I can approach Cairns. And see if he recognizes the pouch. Well, he's not gonna like that. You're just gonna show that pouch to him? He's gonna hit you in the front door. It's not gonna be not gonna be good. Sea Witch Pub always wanted to go there. Oh yeah, you do not look good, Mr. Holmes. Hate to say it. Nice. Can you show me those moves? No? Okay. Is that a message in the bottle? No. Bunch of stuff. Okay. Pa Patrick Cairns is the arm wrestler. So we just gotta find someone at an arm wrestling table. You look the part. Hey you! Hello there. Are you Cairns? What do you want? We've heard all about the gambling on arm wrestling here. You seem like the likely sort, and I'm up for it. I start at ten shillings. Suits me. Wait. Wait, I don't know how to arm wrestle. Follow Patrick Cairn's facial expressions to understand his moves. Push, retain, idle, and plan your counter strategy. Pay attention to your stamina. Press to continue. What? Press to push, hold to restrain. I don't know what I'm doing. Ah! Ah! That's my controller! Good lord! Don't start vibrating! Oh, fucker. Freaking put it on the floor then. Jesus, that made me jump! If you exit this part now, your progress will not be saved. Exit anyway. No. Hold. I can't hold anymore. Gotta recover some stamina here. I'm losing. Ah! I don't see anything! Ah! He has me. That's a loss of ten shillings. That's the arm that killed a hundred whales. Care to lose another ten shillings? Let's continue. I'm ready to try again. Fine. If you want me to take all your money, no problem with that. Push, restrain, idle. Dude, dude, are you listening in on this? Ah. Uh. Mm. 
Dude, this is not as easy as it looks. I don't know what I'm... Hey, 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 hey! I'm holding to restrain, man! Dude! Gotta get back up. Get back, back, get back up. I could do without those vibrations. Okay, I gotta recover some stamina here. Oh, my friggin' lord. Okay, you fucker. I'm playing this with a controller now. Um, no, actually, I'm just gonna fucking unplug it. What the heck? Man, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a good problem solver, huh? I want to see my face again. No, he's pushing. God damn it! Give me more grunt noises! Oh, oh friggin' hell, I'm just gonna... Okay, we're back to the middle. I do not like this minigame, by the way. And I don't like the god drums in the background either. Stop it! Why? I'm holding to restrain, man! I'm holding! Ah, just friggin' Just get me here. I don't understand how to do that. <laughs> That's the arm that killed a hundred whales. Care to lose another ten shillings? Let's just look at him. Got a golden earring. That's pretty valuable. Bit on his pullover, on his. Oh, cheap clothes. I was not looking at those muzzles. Strong hands. Is that a tattoo? Tattoo? Fingernails. What's that even mean? Ah, that's what that means. I have to do this, I won't I? To try again. Fine. If you want me to take all your money, no problem with that. Give me a little boost right at the start.
I didn't get him. Oh. There you finally go. Oh, Jesus. Just like real arm wrestling, it's actually you were lucky. physically you were focused. Let's go again. No, let's not. Yeah, I've had enough. You're too strong. Come back later when you can use your arms again. <laughs> Gotta get this guy drunk. I gotta get that guy drunk. Can I? Wh why do you want me to go into the tab? That. No, that's that's BS. I don't need that. Disguise yourself. You guy got booze. I gotta get that guy a little weaker than he is right now. I don't think that's gonna work, huh? Dude, I've got the beefiest muscles like ever. Let's do this. Really this was not luck. Again. Fine. If you want me to take all your money, no problem with that. Or do it? Do I gotta lose enough times to give him the pouch? Okay, gotta recover stamina again. He's pushing. Now he ain't. Would you not switch the camera angle so much? Oh, that was quick. Whew. Well, good for you, I reckon. You're stronger than you look. Here's your ten shillings. I'd like to buy you a drink. Good winner as well. That's good. Let's have a drink. You're a good type. Seems you've managed to settle down in life. You've got money, eh? Not all that much. Oh, well. At least you're not as poor as me. Oh. Why do you say poor? You're not working? I'm a harpooner, but you see, the whalers are rare. They don't pay much. So, as a result, find myself arm wrestling to pay for my drink. Harpooner. A harpooner. Interesting. You've had a lot of adventures, I bet. Ah, of course. It's been a dozen years since I've sailed. I've seen everything. Bold Wallace, damn Black Peter, Great Roger, we sailed to the Cape of Good Hope. Black Peter? Black Peter, you say? I've heard rumors about that one. He was the worst of them all. He was a liar, and violent too. Swinging those fists of his around. He was a tyrant, and not much of a captain. At least, not as good as Great Roger. I see. Yes. I was told terrible tales about Black Peter. But you ain't heard the worst. Tell me, and let's have another drink. 
It was in 1883 that it happened. The August of that year. Peter Carey was captain of the Sea Unicorn. And I was a spare harpooner. We were coming out of the ice pack on our way home. One evening, we saw a little craft that had been blown north. There was only one man on her. And he wasn't a sailor. Mm. The crew must have thought that she'd foundered. And they made for the Norwegian coast in the dinghy. I guess they all drowned. We took the man on board. You're not that man, huh? And who was he? I don't know. During the crossing, he and the skipper enjoyed some long talks. His baggage was just a tin box. Mm. That's strange enough. Aye. Even stranger was that on the second night, he disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to him. And of course, nobody could ask Black Peter about it. So he's not alive anymore. You know what happened, don't you? I do. I saw the skipper tie his heels and push him over the rail in the middle of my watch on that dark night. Two days before we sighted the Shetland lights. Black Peter's a murderer. Aye. And those that know him wouldn't be surprised to hear it. But all this must stay between us. All right? Of course. Back in a second. I'm off to the Kazi. I'll be here with my drink. Investigate suspect. Peter Cairns completed. Why'd I just plant that pouch? What? Determine owner of the pouch. Here it is. Have you got any tobacco? I've run out of mine. Nah, I lost my pouch. I don't know where. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, is this your tobacco pouch? Well, uh, oh, it is. <laughs> well, I have to go now. I know a captain who's planning an expedition to Cape Cod. Captain Ahab's his name. He commanded the Pequod. He might need good harpooners. I'll tell him about you. Maybe. If you like, I. I'm done here. It's time to leave. Boy, we know whose pouch it is. We got an harpooner. He's a friggin' strong guy, but we don't know why he would kill that guy just because he, um... You don't just... If you know someone is a murderer, you don't go there, have a drink with him, and then friggin' stick a harpoon in his belly. You don't do that. I mean, he's a murderer. He could do the same to you, couldn't he? Oh well. Let's go to Scotland Yard. I don't know why I'm going to Scotland Yard right now. Let's see. John Nellian seems not to be a usual thief. What is his role in all that? Investigate the murder of Peter Carey. We don't have tasks. So the only weird thing is that Pierce's stock exchange certificate. With the torn out pages. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what to do next. Let's talk to Nelligan. Liam, we don't got anything. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. Okay. I'm not saying another word. Boy. Mork doesn't have anything for us. Leroy, not Leroy. LaRoche? No, that's from the Mentalist. Lestrade. Hey, come on. Don't get stuck on a table. How is the investigation going, Mr. Ryan? Okay, you don't got anything do for me. I don't know what to do. Probably make connections. Patrick Cairns' pouch. Missing tin box? No. Wait, yes. No. Patrick Cairns. Pouch proves guilt. Cairns has confirmed that the pouch belongs to him. This means that he was at the scene of the murder and thus proves his guilt. No, it doesn't. 
pouch proves visit. Cairns has confirmed that the pouch belongs to him. This means that he has what, that he was at the scene of the murder, but does not necessarily prove that he's a murderer. Yes. He's going the same direction. Anything else? Break in attendance, Judas carrieth confession. Liam Hurtley's letter. What the F? Harmless flirting. It's been confirmed that Liam Hurtley was flirting with Peter Carey's wife and even fell in love, but it didn't go beyond the affectionate but harmless letters and words. Uh, desperate jealousy. Liam Hurtley loved Judith Carey so desperately that his jealousy could have provoked him into committing more murder. My unexplained presence. There you go. That looks like a ball sack. I didn't say that. Hurtley's motive. Liam Hurtley's relationship with Judas Carey gives him a motive for killing Peter Carey. Hurtley's innocence. Hurtley's presence at Woodman's Lee on the night of the murder is explained by his affection toward Judith Carey and the fact that he worked there as a gardener. Eh. I'm pretty, I'm pretty into Liam Hurtley as the murderer here. But we don't know how Nelligan fits into the, you know, the deal. Missing tin box and breaking attempts are not connected. Damn you, that didn't do anything for me. Didn't do anything. Can I talk to him again? Confront him. I'm not saying I What am I doing here? Okay, I okay, I guess do we got a telephone that we can use? Cause I don't know what to do with those uh you know with those. What are these? These are the suspect's belongings. I don't know what to do with these. I if these are connected. Ah, there you go. CPR. Now we have the proof that Nelligan's papers were indeed here. It seems that they have vanished, however. I can do that. Missing papers, missing tin box. Stolen valuable papers. Valuable bond certificates for certificates were kept inside the stolen tin box. And the notebook make for Nelligan's motive. Now, John Nelligan could have been caught stealing the bond certificates. This might have been a motive for him to murder Peter Carey. possible conspiracy. Both Nelligan and Hurtley are lying, therefore they might be working together. Strength, two murderers. John Hopley, Nelligan and Liam Hurtley conspire together to murder Peter Carey. Nelligan's motive was revenge for Carey's theft. Carey's theft. What was Carey's theft? Oh. He stole that from him, from from his dad. He killed his dad, took the, his belongings, is his murder. That's a very, very strong motive if he wants a revenge for his father's death. How did he find out? I have no clue. The other one has a motive too. And I'm not into, like, the, the poor sailor. Not, well, poor sailor. But I don't think yeah, this works. Nelligan could be a in a conspiracy, but he don't have the ha doesn't have the arm strength. But his father being murdered by that guy is an extremely strong motive. I think this is Nelligan is the initiator. Liam Hurtley and John Nelligan are guilty of a heinous premediated crime. Let them be punished by the law. Nelligan was the initiator, and Hurtley his accomplice. Liam Hurtley and John Nelligan are guilty of a heinous procurement. Let them be punished by the law. Hurtley was the initiator. Poor Nelligan was just following his lead. No. Nelligan's father... Nelligan has the strongest um, motive, in my opinion. This is... this is, I think this is my moral choice, yes. This is what's happening right now. The case is solved. I am now ready to present the guilty party. So tell me, who killed Black Peter? Nelligan Hurtley. There are two culprits, Inspector. Nelligan and Hurtley. What? 
Well, I would never have guessed, Mr. Holmes. They are a rotten pair, though. And it was a combination of two motives, culminating in one crime. What were their motives? The first was revenge. Black Peter possessed the bond certificates that had belonged to Nelligan's father, and young Nelligan wished to retrieve them. And the second? The second was a crime of passion. Liam Hurtley was in love with Black Peter's wife, and this caused a conflict between him and Carrie. Well, well, well. Makes sense, Mr. Holmes. I suggest that you organize a small confrontation between the two, just to confirm my accusations. That's a good idea, Mr. Holmes. I'll talk to these fellows. Join me in the interrogation room. With pleasure. I know it's been 26 minutes, but... Can we do this? Gentlemen, we know everything about of course your we can. association to kill Black Peter. Admit that you planned it together. Our association? I don't even know this man. You needed to kill Peter Carey. There had to be two of you there. Ridiculous. I'm innocent. All that remains is to determine the level of guilt. Which one of you is the initiator in this case? But I just told you I've never seen this man before. It's him. He's the culprit. He was forcing me. He threatened me. He's the mastermind behind it all. <sighs> Shut up. You're a lunatic. Well, it all seems very clear, don't you think, Mr. Holmes? Inspector, I believe that Nelligan is the true culprit. Hurtley was his accomplice, blinded by his love for Peter's wife. You've got it wrong. It isn't true. That's right. I confess. Mm. Well, young man, it turns out you are the gang leader. Mm. I don't fancy your chances now. The case is resolved, Inspector. I shall return to Baker Street. Very well, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye for now. Damn it! That was not... That was not good! What do you mean, replay ending? Do you really want to replay the conclusion? The game will load before the moral choice was made. Yes, of course! I didn't... Nelligan doesn't have the balls! He doesn't! But Liam isn't smart enough to find that guy! I want Liam as the initiator now, because he's a slick bastard! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back in time, the game gives me the option of all this not being final, then I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna... Oh, I should hit continue. So, missing papers, break in, blur, 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 blur. Okay, wait, 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 what did I do? Retrieving the notebook. The drape breaking attempts were made in order to recover the notebook that had been lying in a pool of the victim's blood. Guilt of the person who made these attempts. No, looking for papers. Nelligans were looking for his father's papers in the black Peter's cabin. His presence. Nelligan's motive. Red color highlights logical conflicts. What? This is what we had. Yeah, possible conspiracy. And two murderers, but Hurtley as the initiator. Liam Hurtley and John Nellian are guilty of the heinous premediated pre crime. Let them be punished by the law. Hurtley was the initiator. Poor Nellian was just following his lead. Since we've had this extremely long episode, I'm just going to go down to the Sea Witch and I'm going to talk to that sailor again. Because it doesn't add up. Why is he in here? Why was he at Black Peter? Never mind. Moral choice happening right now. Hurtley. Yes. The case is solved. I am now ready to present the guilty party. So tell me, who killed Black Peter? 
There are two culprits, Inspector. Nelligan and Hurtley. What? Well, I would never have guessed, Mr. Holmes. They are a rotten pair, though. It was a combination of two motives, culminating in one crime. What were their motives? The first was revenge. Black Peter possessed the bond certificates that had belonged to Nelligan's father, and young Nelligan wished to retrieve them. And the second? The second was a crime of passion. Liam Hurtley was in love with Black Peter's wife, and this caused a conflict between him and Carrie. Well, well, well. Makes sense, Mr. Holmes. I suggest that you organize a small confrontation between the two, just to confirm my accusations. That's a good idea, Mr. Holmes. I'll talk to these fellows. Join me in the interrogation room. Gentlemen, we know everything about your association to kill Black Peter. Admit that you planned it together. Our association? I don't even know this man. You needed to kill Peter Carey. There had to be two of you there. Ridiculous. I'm innocent. All that remains is to determine the level of guilt. Which one of you is the initiator in this case? But I just told you I've never seen this man before. It's him. He's the culprit. He was forcing me. He threatened me. He's the mastermind behind it all. Shut up. You're a lunatic. Well, it all seems very clear, don't you think, Mr. Holmes? Both are guilty, of course, but I believe that Hurtley was the initiator of the crime. It's ridiculous. Why would I need the help of this weakling? You wanted to be rid of the man who was terrorizing his wife, and who prevented the two of you from being together. Young Nelligan was just following his lead. You are wrong. I have nothing whatsoever to do with this. You'll explain that to the judge. That's better. This is resolved, Inspector. I shall return to Baker Street. Very well, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye for now. It's better, but still not perfect. Hold to check your conclusion. May spoil game experience. Well, I'm gonna check it now. Conclusion two murderers is wrong. Hmm. Hmm. So in the end, Liam is really just a thief, huh? Well, I'm gonna let him get murdered. Warning! You are about to finish the case. This The save file for this case will be removed. Press no if you would like to select another moral choice. Press yes if you agree with the choice you have made and you are ready to start a new chapter. Friggin' hell, I'm gonna cut this part out. You're gonna see Liam being charged alone right now. The case is solved. I am now ready to present... All right, Liam, you're gonna get it now. It was Liam Hurtley. That doesn't surprise me. I've never seen a guiltier looking fellow. He was in love with Judith Carey. It caused a conflict that proved fatal for her husband. I see. Come on now, let us confront him. Liam Hurtley, it was you who killed Black Peter. He learned of your relationship with his wife, and he asked that you meet him to share in a drink. Then began the quarrel. He drew his knife, and in self-defense, you took up the harpoon. What? Lestrade, please put that in your report. I deny everything. You have no proof. What do you mean Calm in self-defense? Thank your stars that Mr. Holmes just saved your neck. The case is resolved, Inspector. I shall return to Baker Street. Very well, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye for now. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. That's, uh, that's dumb! 
Why is that wrong? Let's see the other one. The case is. Huh. There you go, Liam. Liam Hurtley. That doesn't surprise me. I've never seen a guiltier looking fellow. He was in love with Judith Carey. It caused a conflict that proved fatal for her husband. I see. Come on now. Let us confront him. Liam Hurtley, you are formally accused of the murder of Peter Carey. We are aware that you were in love with Carey's wife. He was a violent and irascible man. He needed to be eliminated. You had no qualms. But that's absurd. I'm innocent. Well, we caught you, lad. The case is resolved, Inspector. I shall return to Baker Street. Very well, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye for now. Dude. Dude. No, this is it. I will not hold to check your conclusion. <laughs> what motive does the sailor have? He did not have anything happen to him. Like, he isn't a vigilante. We got all the clues. Just because his damn pouch was there doesn't explain he friggin' put that guy on a harpoon. Oh. Just because he knows how to handle his harpoons. Ah, heck. Oh, oh, we're going in the, in the car. So, Peter Cairns, you're gonna come with me. You're gonna have to come with me. Damn it, I wanted to be a, like, I, I had to, I, I gotta go. I did not want this episode to be 40 minutes long. I wanted it to be more like 16 minutes long. Oh, well. Oh, for you guys, it's not 40 minutes. I must be at the wrong address. I'd like to speak with a ship's captain, a Captain Ahab. Is that you? No, my name is Sherlock Holmes. That detective fella? So, you wanted to see me? That is correct. We need to talk. About what? About Black Peter, who was killed in his own hut with a harpoon. You know, don't you? Yes. How? The tobacco pouch. You recognized it. Oh, the sailor. It was you. Unbelievable. Well, fine. I confess. But if you really do know everything, you should also know that I didn't want to kill him. He made me do it. I know. Did you know about this story with the bond certificates? Did you need money? Yeah. I just wanted him to cough up a little silver. I'm out of work, and I thought maybe he could help me. Well, he refused outright, and he insulted me. I reminded him I knew all about that murder he committed at sea in 1883. Then he got mad when I spoke about his treasure. I barely just had time to throw the harpoon at him before he could jump at me with his knife. You know the truth? What will you do now? I ask that you return the bond certificates. Keep some of them. You will need them in your exile. It is better that you leave the country for a few years. And you won't say anything to the police? I will not say anything as long as you return the money. Well, I'll do as you ask. But what about Inspector Lestrade? I will deal with him. Goodbye. Hmm. Huh. It's good that you asked me to come, Mr. Holmes. We do need to talk. About what? What do you mean? Our case, Mr. Holmes. You sent me a message via your little thug. His name is Wiggins, Inspector. Telling me that the case is solved. Well, Mr. Holmes, tell me, who is our murderer and where is he? The morgue. Eh? His name is, or rather was, Pablo Coventral. He was also on the ship with Peter Carey. 
and he was a harpooner. I'll tell you everything, Inspector, but do calm down. Mrs. Hudson will bring us tea and orange cake. Orange cake? You're spoiling me, Mr. Holmes. That's my favorite. <laughs> oh, goddamn sleek bastard. Oh, Mr. Holmes, Inspector Lestrade told me that I should thank you for clearing my name. He also said that you were waiting for me here. I came as fast as I could. I cannot thank you enough. It is all because of you that this nightmare is finally over. I believe that this belongs to you. My father's securities. Incredible. But how did you get them? It would take far too long to explain. Tell me. This is extraordinary. You are a genius. Then After the fifth try. As an explanation. Goodbye, Mr. Nelligan, and good luck. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes, and thank you. A thousand times thank you. Hey, man. At least I'm not a real policeman. I'm gonna end it that. It's pretty, that's, that's the one silver lining we got going on right here. So please light that up in green. Fine, a fuckingly. <sighs> Except yes. Personality ranking. Sympathizing. People made the same moral choice. 86%. Uh, 61%. And people solved the case the same way. 79%. Well, probably after a lot of tries too. Riddle on the rails. I, I, cap and... Uh, can I just boot out of the game right now? Because I would really like to, you know... I guess we're gonna see a little cutscene again. This trip to the countryside will be good for you, Holmes. Hmm. As your friend and your doctor, I really do recommend that you give yourself a complete change of scene. Fresh air, brisk walks, bird watching, chopping wood, Sounds intolerable. I mean, certainly it sounds delightful. But you haven't yet told me who your friend is. The one we're going to visit. He is a bee lover. A bee lover? Do you mean that he keeps bees? That must be Mrs. Hudson, bringing the warm cloth that I requested. There is someone to see you, Mr. Holmes. I have no time. Send whoever it is away. Yes, Holmes, I really think we ought to leave now. Da -dum -dum -da -da -dum -dum. Mycroft. <sighs> Sherlock. Oh, uh, Mr. Holmes? Perhaps you don't remember me. I'm Dr. Watson. Uh, we met at the Diogenes Club a few years ago. I documented our encounter in a short story I gave the title The Greek Interpreter. He does remember you, Watson. My brother remembers everything, and that is why he is so valuable to the government. We're about to depart for the train station. I know. You know? Sherlock, I need your help. There are people who presently threaten both our country and the crown itself. You must help us with those methods of yours. Need? Help? Those are not words I would readily associate with you, Mycroft. I wrote you a letter, but you did not reply. And this is not about politics. It's about people. People similar to those whom you pretend to defend in your petty detective affairs. Everything is about politics with you, Mycroft. I'm not interested. Have some of your agents, your spies, or worse, undertake this job of yours. You are defending your people, and they have little to do with the people I choose to help, I can assure you. That is the point. You think exactly as they do. Who are they? The Merry Men. He is talking about the Merry Men. A band of idealistic terrorists. Sherlock, do please think about it. They are planning something diabolical. Your country needs you. You need me, Mycroft. And you are not the country. Although if your waistline expands very much further... Mrs. Hudson, tea will not be necessary. Dr. Watson... The train conductor, Mr. Parker, is aware that you will be seven minutes late. You are in the fourth car. The train will be waiting for you. 
Sherlock, enjoy your time in Staffordshire. And do, please, at least write to me on your return. Get it over with. I need to leave. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.